Welcome guys, I am Dr. Ariel Lipkin from Air Force Lifecycle Management Center. And I am the chair for Sensor Open System Architectures uh, Consortium. So um, this is all started a few years ago when uh, we really needed to do an open architecture. Um, I have requirements from ACC, I have requirements from Congress, and uh, we really need to define what do we really mean by open architecture and how to eat it. I mean, you all have seen, you shall do open architecture. Great, now what does that mean? Is just saying I'm using TCP IP good enough or uh, do I need to be more exotic? Well, obviously I have to be more exotic because everybody does TCP IP and I already squeezed all the savings I can from it. So um, basically what we did is we went around and uh, tried to do something in a more inclusive manner because we also realized we as the Air Force uh, don't buy enough anymore. But we as a DOD buy a lot. So it made perfect sense to collaborate with other services and other partners for a common goal. Uh, basically, uh, scale, number stock. So um, I will go through a little bit of an outline and uh, talk a little bit about SOSA, and then hopefully you guys will get some lunch. <laughs> so uh, what we did is uh, we sat down on the government side before there was such a thing as SOSA and tried to figure out what do we really want to do for open architecture for C4 ISR specifically. And we come up with a vision, uh, which is outlined right here, and a set of goals, which are right here. So um, the vision is an acquisition and technical environment for sensors and traditional C4 ISI payloads, uh, which fosters innovation, industry engagement, and competition, allows for rapid fielding of capabilities and platform mission reconfigurations while minimizing logistical requirements. Um, Air Force Lifecycle Management Center cares about life cycle. So everything I do, I have to think about fielding for 30 to 40 years operational use, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. But I have to take account the entire life cycle, which means the costs and uh, other open architecture considerations are different, uh, as opposed to doing a, something, a one-off hitter, uh, <laughs> something we field for two, three years, and then throw it away. So another one of our key goals is uh, to be cost effective and uh, <clears throat> harmonized. Harmonized means we are not here to create new standards, we're here to leverage existing standards. And if we do identify the gap, a work within the SOSA and within the standard that has a gap, trying to bridge it. And uh, <clears throat> SOSA includes a business part as well as the technical. We are working with the industry partners to make sure we have an attractive business IP model that uh, allows you guys to keep your IP and give me enough of the interfaces open that I can do my IP. So uh, basically, I'm not here to take over the world. I'm here to make sure the world is modular. So um, as you seen earlier, uh, SOSA basically creates several pieces at the subsystem level for sensors. And our goal is to um, basically enable to procure each piece independently and separately, integrate it into our systems, and move forward. So what constitutes SOSA? Basically, it's any element that creates a, uh, a sensor or a suite of sensors. One of our goals is to have a multimodal sensor capabilities, which means I want to blend a radar and a SIGINT, EW and the radar, communications and the radar, you name it. Any of those five modalities that are part of SOSA, which is radar, SIGINT, EOIR, uh, comms, and EW. So, um, and the reason for that is, uh, we need to do something to make our sensors more capable. And as you guys know, with an iPhone, they keep adding features, and they keep making things smaller and more integrative. We gotta do the same thing for the sensor payloads. If I save a pound on equipment, that means I can stay in the air longer. I think uh, sometimes the calculations are, you know, one pound of fuel, one pound of equipment, <laughs> or something like that. So any little ounce helps. Some of the things we do is, uh, we're trying to merge the business logic, where does it make sense to have an open architecture from uh, dollars, with the technical logic, what does it make sense from the technical capabilities. Uh, one thing I have not set up until now is SOSA actually has three major technical elements to it. Hardware, which is comprised of merging of CMOS and host. Uh, software, which is comprising of merging other open architecture standards, such as Red Hook. Um, OMS, uh, Victory, Stanek, Profiles, um, MBE, 
Frost, uh, Corpse, you name it. Uh, many, 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 many standards that we in the uh, consortium try to identify and use. Um, I think there is NIOPS, there is a whole bunch of them. I can't really tell you unless I go back and look at the list. But what we do is we go through and we identify what we need to do and we use it accordingly. And of course, electrical and mechanical. One thing we realized is cables are expensive. <laughs> so the more we can centerize cables and mechanical interfaces, the better we'll all be. Uh, one of the things uh, we want to do is uh, separate a payload from the vehicle. For example, you saw a picture of a CMOS hardware box that went on a striker. Um, I flew that box as part of the Edge LPOD demo um, last summer. If you uh, Google um, Edge LPOD flight on a DC-3, you will see it. So that box technically was in a vehicle and was in the air. No difference. Why? Because it, it's the same. And by standardizing physical connectors, we can do that. So this way I can grow economies of scale. So um, this is kind of our methodology. Um, we are following DOTAF uh, to make sure we do proper architecture. Nothing that I do in SOSA is because I want to. Everything is procurement driven. Uh, all of the stuff we do there is based on program of record needs. Uh, now those needs do come from Navy, as you heard from uh, Navy. Uh, they also come from the Army. Uh, they couldn't make it. Frankly, I barely made it. <laughs> uh, and, of course, from the Air Force. Um, nothing in SOSA is there because we want to or it's a good idea. It's there because there is a real program of record need. Uh, simply put, SOSA is procurement driven. And, of course, as you can see, SOSA is intended to promote the development of reusable sensor components applicable to broad class of sensors and host platforms. I do not differentiate between Army, Navy, Air Force, or space systems. To me, it's the same. There's no difference in an Intel i7 processor. It still does the same thing regardless of its application. Uh, a lot of our components are COTS. So we're taking a neutral stance. Uh, sensor should not care how it's deployed. It just needs to work. So what we're doing is we're building an architecture that supports it. Um, another part of it is, as I mentioned earlier, we are developing an open business model uh, that has to address uh, business needs. If I don't do that, you, as the industry, will not participate or collaborate. I'm not here to take your IP. I'm here to work with you to make sure that uh, technology actually works. <laughs> so we do have a business working group, and uh, one of the things they've done is uh, they sat down with an industry partners, and we uh, collectively decided, all right, we're going to do key interfaces for open that we consider important in the, in the hardware, software, and electrical mechanical domains. The next discussion is data rights IP. Um, how is it protected? How is it restricted? How is it open? So we're having those discussions to make sure that whatever we come up with is acceptable to our industry partners. Otherwise, again, you would not participate. Uh, another part of that, uh, of the business model, is uh, we want to make sure that as we develop it, we properly incentivize industry to invest. Um, we don't have a huge budget. We have to rely on you guys as well. So the days of unlimited dollars are over. So um, the only way we can do this is if we pull our resources together. Um, as part of it, uh, we've started developing something to help us and to help you. We're working on the common language to uh, properly define what do we really want from open architecture in SAO and Cedral um, language, as well as section L and M. To those of you who are not familiar, those are contractual languages that we use uh, during acquisition uh, when we give something to the contractor. Uh, one of the things that we discovered is the contractors also need help uh, to reply to what do we really mean open. So business working group is working on that as well. So we can all have common understanding from contractual point of view. What are we putting in contract and what is open means? As I mentioned earlier, SOSA does allow to develop key, cap uh, key interfaces that are well defined and uh, that's what we're doing in all the working groups. It allows us to reuse the same capabilities across several environments. For example, uh, the stuff that Patrick did um, earlier with the Space VPX, uh, we're fully absorbing that, that's fully applicable. Same thing as anything else that has uh, similar capabilities. So um, here are the five working groups. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, architecture is doing a lot of good work to make sure we're all speaking the same language across software, hardware, and electrical mechanical. Business is doing data rights, IP, contracting guide, SAO, Cedral, 
CDD, section l &M, and marketing. One of the things we realized is, uh, what's Gupa Open Architecture if nobody knows about it? Right? If you don't know it exists, how are you going to build it? How are you going to comply to it? So outreach and marketing is critical. Uh, we are leveraging Agile Pod on the Air Force side to do a laboratory in the sky, which we also develop with open standards and specifications. And we're making sure that everything is multi-service compatible. So, which is why we got three services represented on this diagram. So uh, one of the things we spent about a year and a half is trying to come up with a generic sensor that is equivalently applicable to radar, SIGINT, EOAR, comms, and EW. So we come up with a 26 distinct modules. That took a year and a half. That was hard work. But um, all of them are next door right now trying to be defined to key interfaces. Once we do, this should work for any type of phenomenology outlined in SOSA. But most importantly, it enables the uh, creation of multimodal sensor capabilities, which means I can now bridge two or three phenomenologies in one software and hardware architecture. As we move from FPGA and ASIC storage CPU and GP, GPU computing, that becomes a key enabling capability because each of those modules can be instantiated right now either in hardware or software. We don't care. But at a later date, what we want to do is be more software centric. We can't right now. If I have a micro picosecond latencies or lower, I can't do it. It's hardware only. But in five to 10 years, I can. And as I mentioned earlier about the business, um, we are trying to balance your needs and our needs. So there's a lot of uh, great discussion going on in the business working group to make sure that this is accounted for. As I mentioned earlier, we are working on um, common interfaces for software. That also includes, believe it or not, firmware, drivers, yes, and operating systems, um, as well as a chassis manager and cybersecurity. Frankly, this is a brand new world. If you don't have security, you don't have anything. So I want to make sure that everything is properly accounted for. Uh, in the hardware, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is really primarily the merge of uh, CMOS and host, which constitutes SOSA. So right now, uh, this was initially kicked off in 2015. Uh, we started off um, as our own independent consortium in 2017, November. Up until then, the only way to join SOSA was to join FACE. Uh, but right now, you can join us without joining FACE. Uh, we did finish the first snapshot release, uh, which is basically a, a draft preview of where the consortium is headed. It is not a finished product by any means. It meant to give you a glimpse of where we're going and entice you to come participate before it becomes 1.0. Because once it becomes 1.0, that's what the government will be buying. You will not be able to make as many contributions as you can right now. So I'd like to say either you can be on the ground floor and then make sure your stuff is considered, or you can be the follower and enjoy other people's stuff being considered. And of course, uh, the next snapshot roughly planned for September, but since SOS is a consortium, I go at the speed of volunteers. That Those are notional dates based on their capability. We did have a successful demo in uh, 2017 where we flew on the DC-3 on the Agile pod, which is also leveraging SOS electrical mechanical specs and uh, the same chassis so in CMOS briefing flew as part of it uh, with the host specifications as well. We were actually able to provide, we can do OMS, Mora, and Red Hawk in one flight demo. Isn't that wonderful when you spend several open architectures together? And of course, next demo planned in the fall 2018. So in conclusion, <clears throat> this is really a tri-service effort with a full industry collaboration. Um, and I need your help. Uh, please come participate and uh, provide your inputs or enjoy somebody else's participation after we publish it.